That's an excerpt from one of my favorite Coprash etudes, and I wanted to use it to demonstrate how to manage your air during um, technical phrases. Now clearly I'm all over the horn and I'm using lots of arm motion and that tends to take a little more oxygen out of your system. So the first rule of thumb is when you have something technical, these phrases are very long, then you want to be as efficient as you can. The more you're working really hard with your arm, the more you're going to use up that valuable oxygen and this is all about conserving your energy so that you're able to make it from the beginning to the end of the phrase. One of the most important concepts that uh, tends to get overlooked is that at the very beginning, you want to take a big breath, obviously, but then you don't want to push it all out at the beginning of the phrase because then you'll run out. So the effect is really much more like this. Take a big breath in. and keep the air going at a constant speed and volume from the beginning of the phrase all the way to the end so that you're blowing through the phrase and that you don't run out. If you were to do this, <sighs> then at the end of the phrase you'd be left squeezing the last you know, 20 to 25 percent of the air out of your body and nobody really sounds good when they're doing that. So I like staying on the top half of my airstream that means that I want to be as full as possible, as full of air as possible at all times. So I like to top it off, you know, if I'm in the middle of something and I'm starting to run out of air, I try to think ahead and top it off so that I don't reach that, you know, um, half full, half full tank area. Now, because on the bottom half of the air, it is very difficult to uh, continue to think straight, you know, it kind of feels like you're being held under water, and that's typically when we make mistakes, is when we're on the bottom half of our airstream. It's also extremely difficult to play high notes when you're on that second half of your air. Now, of course, sometimes that's necessary, but um, all of my students and everybody I've ever worked with sounds better on the top half of the airstream. In other words, when you're full, especially when you have to play um, high notes. Um, the other issue here is in the midst of this particular phrase, you want to take a quick breath in the middle, and that's a real art form to doing that. You have to plan ahead, and you have to look for an opportunity. Your best opportunity, of course, is if there's a rest. You want to breathe on the rest, but there is no rest in this particular etude. There are a couple of eighth notes. So you want to look for the longer note values in order to find the place to breathe. So in this case, they're all sixteenths except for a few eighth notes. Well, that means you have to breathe after an eighth note. If the music were written differently or if it were melodic, the same principle would apply. You would try to find a long note because the time it takes to breathe gets removed from the note that precedes the breath. If you think about it. So that note that comes right before the breath is going to get cheated just a little bit. Cheated is a bad word because it doesn't really sound like that. The point is, the, the note that it comes after the breath has to be in time. If it's not in time, then it's going to sound late. And you don't want to take the time to breathe away from the future note. You want to take it away from the previous note. I can't stress this enough that as you run out of air, you tend to make more mistakes. And for that reason, you want to be efficient and stay on the top half of your airstream as best you can. Um, the other issue with this etude is that there's a sense that the phrasing goes um, from point A all the way to point B, and, I'm, and clearly there are sets of two, and I'm using a lot of natural slurs so that I can keep my arm motion really fluid and I can keep that air moving consistently through the phrase. I'll play the first part of this again. Now I'm using a few alternate positions in order to create natural slurs. For me, it makes a lot of sense to do that. 
And um, I would recommend, if you have something like this, to, to try it so that you can uh, be more efficient and use your tongue less. If I were to tongue every note, it's possible to do that, but it's a lot more work, and I would say it's less efficient, and for me, it takes more air. So I'm far less likely to make the phrase comfortably. If I go back to the natural slur idea, what I'm doing here is there are sets of two, obviously, so I'm tonguing the first note, and then I'm not tonguing the second note. So if I were to say it out loud, it would be ta, 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 and that second note would just be a natural slur. So in this case, uh, D to F, I'm putting the F out to create a natural slur. And if that's unfamiliar to you, or if it makes you um, uncomfortable in some way, <clears throat> then you have two choices. Either put it in first and work a little harder, or get used to it so that you can make it fluid like you hear me playing, and you can go all the way through the phrase with the same articulation pattern, which makes things much easier, actually. Now, you can take this principle too far, obviously, uh, by putting everything out in alternate positions. I am not advocating that. It really depends on your threshold and what makes the most musical sense. For me, in this phrase, I like the idea of the natural slurs, so I'm going to create them by tossing in a few uh, natural slurs. So there's a, a quick overview of how to breathe efficiently when playing a technical etude.